So, the battle yeah, begins. There's, there's answers both ways in this game. Okay, so it'll be interesting to see bye, how bye, exactly bye, 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 Entity bye, bye, tries to deal bye, bye, with uh, bye, bye, some of those answers because they can't bye, bye, afford bye, bye, to let bye, bye, Amar bye, bye. have that kind of laning phase, right? No, and they have Enchantress. So, I mean, this is arguably the strongest laner in the entire game. Uh, you're playing to Marana, so the creeps are less of an issue, but even leveling up just the W for slowing and like going on Amar on Timber, like with the Monkey King, or leveling up the Q and just doing that harass damage with Enchantress, like those are both options. That's uh, you, you don't really need the creeps necessarily on Edge to like, dominate the lane. Yeah. Like, all of her spells are really good for lane domination. Of course, you still do want the creeps because you want to pressure early tower, stuff like that, but you can start Q, start with your heal, whatever. Oh, they're actually, okay. So they're dodging the Marana matchup. And they have Pugna with the, or sorry, they have uh, the Shadow Shaman. I, I like that. Uh, Shadow Shaman with Monkey King. A, a grip on Timber with the Monkey King Jingu, like that sounds really devastating yeah. for, monkey, for Timber Saw. Yeah, this looks way better. I'm surprised the uh, OG's not trying to rotate the uh, Marana towards the Enchantress. I suppose it's because Timber can be left alone eventually and Marana loves that. She can just go jungle, right? So. Yeah, because well, there wasn't Taiga there at the start. Or start? I, I think it was at top lane at the very start of the, the game. I don't remember the pause. The so really. I think they actively chose to have the Marana down here. They're like, okay, we they dodged the Enchantress Marana matchup, but we still want the Marana there. Yeah. And the reason sure. you're saying makes a lot of sense is particularly with the Kunkka, who can set up an arrow very oh, and, a, and a Bane in the other lane. Like, yeah, Marana being yeah. off map is insanely strong in this game. That's true. If Marana's off map, like you have to be afraid in the other two lanes. And the only way you can be off map is if your core in the lane doesn't need you. Timber, as soon as he's level three, doesn't need any help from any support. What do you make of the, the overall, like, Stormstormer? It's his hero, Pugna. Okay, but is Pugna core good right now uh, compared to the support position? Because it just seems like support Pugna is so free. It, it actually has a... Uh, so the win rate as four is low. The win rate as mid is, like, full, close to 50%. Okay. The win rate on five is, like, 58% in pro-level pub. Jeez. So five Pugna it seems to be the absolute best role for Pugna. Mid Pugna seems... Okay, it seems decent. Okay. So because it's a specialty hero of his, probably it's it's a vi it's viable in this patch, and so mm. any specialty player is going to be happy when their hero is even viable. They'll make it work, so it'll be good. But uh, yeah, five Pugna is like beyond busted. And I, I think it's with regards to like the build. I think the glimmer and the four staff, that sort of stuff, uh, is much better on Pugna. Just playing around, maxing out the Nether Ward instead of being a nuking type hero, playing around being a healer is is better. And all of those things that I just mentioned, that's what fives do. Right, right. Seems like the lanes have started off pretty well for Entity here. Mid lane matchup seems to be a little hard for the uh, Pugna. But otherwise, Monkey King's doing a pretty good job of keeping Amar down. Of course, Amar just got level three, which is pretty critical level for the Amber, the uh, Timber Saw. Uh, yep, and he went for two points in Reactive instead of two points in Timber Chain. So that means if he did want to go cut, he can go do that now. But the problem is the W is so inefficient at level one in terms of the mana cost that it it's hard to actually kill the creep wave if you cut. So you need like level four now to do that. Yeah. And this lane is, I mean, this is going to be a, a snooze fest, uh, at least for the side of... Uh, <laughs> I mean, that's any lane with the dragon. Yeah, yeah. I hate yeah. this hero, he just, man. He just farms. He's so boring. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, this is the other hero that can be, you know, in Dota. And his side lane, it could be pretty easily left alone because he just, you sit there and hit him and he just doesn't take damage. And if he does, he heals it, so. Yeah, there's these times where it's like, oh, look, look, look how many denies this Dragonite has. And then you remember, oh, oh yeah, it's yeah. literally free. He just Dragon Tail stuns you and he can right click the creep wave twice. Yeah, before you act. Times, yeah, like times. it's, like how can you possibly beat that as a core? You can't. When it comes to that CS, you can't. You can't. No. It's, uh, and, and it, he's impossible to harass as well. And Mars actually. His read on this lane is that he can stay versus the monkey with level two reactive, which is interesting because I don't know, it's a, it's a tough read. I mean, against Ursa, I don't think that would work. Depends on the skill points, or, but he actually is pretty tanky. The soul ring armor as well, like that matters. Yeah, yeah, certainly. T Timber, and... Timber's like super based on these like damage thresholds. We have yeah. like enough armor, enough regen to sustain through something. Dyer's current. So it's super important for him to constantly keep max reactive armor stacks. Yeah. Yes. Which, whenever he gets chased away from the creep wave, it's gonna feel kind of bad. Yeah, this is a tough, it's a tough lane to play, but 
I mean, it's one of the classic counters, so Amara has played this one like so many times at this point. Like, any Timber main has played against Monkey Kings and Ursa like almost every game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because carries get last pick in pubs. Holding in the Marana. Can they actually get this kill? They do have the Kunkka coming in, but the boat is going to be a little off the mark. They're not there in time, rather. Chrysalis picks up the first blood. He is going to be pulled back to his doom, but still, the fact they got a first blood despite the BCM rotation is going to feel okay for Entity. Misha now going to be in some trouble. He's going to be stunned up and killed. So they at least kind of even out those kills. And 2k Goldie, just like that. Uh, yeah, they're doing very well. Wow, and Stormstorm are in the meantime, too. Uh, he's just kind of chilling mid, not actually doing any damage to the tower. Hasn't even hit it once, surprisingly. He's just opting to kill the easy camp instead. Yeah, Amar, he's not level 5, so I'm not sure if they could actually do anything about the Timber Saw anymore. Yuragi, though, he has had some serious trouble. Look at his net worth. He is bottom of all the cores right now, and that's just because Toby is able to get so many denies against him with via the Dragon yeah, Tail. Yeah. Tomy's constantly harassing him as well. In my opinion, he's stunning him and then denying, so... Yeah, that is probably a good assumption. That will be a way of getting guaranteed <laughs> denies there, so... It is free every time. Yeah, and on, on both side lanes, or both off lanes, I should say, uh, you can see Toby's getting excellent levels, like almost level, almost level six. And uh, man, he's, he's even max, maxing uh, Dragon's Breath, which is what a lot of uh, a lot of people are doing these days. Instead of maxing the uh, the passive, just because yeah. Dragon's Breath, it does it, it recently got buffed. It does uh, 20 more damage at max level. So one shots range creeps, great for harass too. Certainly, and that's uh, where Yuragi's probably been suffering a little bit. Misha does barely stay alive, but as Toby is closing in on that level six, not having the support in lane is going to feel real bad for Yuragi. They're going to need a little bit of help here, and that's why BCM's going to come in, and without those higher levels of the passives, he is going to die. So that is the downside yes. of going for the 3 one, one build, is that it does leave you a lot squishier. Dyer's for sure, for sure. Taiga. Arrow gonna be thrown out, dodged by Chrysalis, but of course the Shadow Shaman couldn't do anything about that one. And Amar, he has three levels of reactive armor. You're just not killing him with this lane anymore. And they gotta stop thinking about it. Oh, what a play. They actually pop the glyph. Chrysalis gets zero heal out of that one. He needs a little bit of time to be able to jump into the trees, but he can't quite get it. The arrow lands, and they've got him dead as well. Big pickup as now Amar getting revenge for all that harassment early is easily winning the lane. I gotta say, if anybody Radiant's wants to learn Timbersaw, this is a really great l game to look at for for how to play the hero. Like, there's high-level stuff happening in this game because you have a guy who, he's a Monkey King specialist. So he's played against the Timber a million times. And you have a Timber specialist who's played against Monkey King a million times. And we're seeing how Timber can actually beat Monkey King. And it's not through wave cutting, which we've seen in a lot of these like unfavorable Timber matchups. I think their reasoning that he can just be in the lane and play normally is that they have Marana who can go jungle, and so Amar's getting solo XP, and so it's really hard for, they, they can't, they can never kill him, because he he, the, the, he just has too many levels. Like, he also secures the range creep without being in, like, like he can just throw, throw yeah. out the arrow, right, and Timber takes it all. Right, so Monkey King can't get the, the XP advantage, because I, I think in that matchup, if Monkey King has, like, plus one level in Jingu compared to the reactive armor, mm -hmm. you just go on him and he dies through his regen. The, the Timber will die. But uh, it, it looks like, uh, for me, like I always cut when I'm against a Monkey King, but in this situation, like he actually just knows that he has enough regen given the level advantage that he has, which is really interesting. Oh, Katomi's not gonna get away in time. That boat is gonna land, they secure. Oh, he did manage to deny the bounty room. Nice. Play Katomi. Nice. Uh, it's the spiteful support play. Yeah, literally worth it. <laughs> worth his death for the, you know, you could argue. The creep could just be there, but uh, no, that, that's what you want from an Enchantress to be positioning up aggressively like that. The the only problem, the only downside to that is uh, that was a Marana that's like in the four position. He was uh, getting, you know, he was in the winning lane. Yeah. And again, most Mar most uh, Enchantress lanes win, but uh, she, yeah, she's uh, doesn't necessarily want to run in and die like a five does. A little bit surprised that Crystal still wants to play this lane now. I thought he would rotate uh, to top after they've taken that tower, but 
He continues to play against the Timber Saw. Maybe they're going to get a rotation from Storm Stormer sometime, who has, uh, we haven't actually seen him on screen for a while, but I feel like he's just been chilling mid lane. And if he's going to be doing all that chilling, he can't afford to die here. Unfortunately, the arrow doesn't land. His extra bit of movement speed that Apugna has allows him to dodge that one. They're going to get the Bane kill as a little bit of revenge for Storm Stormer. So he took the mid tower. They've taken the top tower. Katomi, well, BZM may not have gotten the mid kill, but at least he'll get the Enchantress again. Once again, that's not really what you want to see from your Enchantress if you're position four. Like, yeah. dying as a five like that is a lot more okay. But as a four, they're, like, they're going to end up two fives this game, basically, because of this. Like, Enchantress falls off like crazy. Bye, you, All right, bye, Fishman's bye. ready to that go. Was, that was Fishman. He's not a fish. I was tricked. No. It's not. Garage just chilling in the trees like he's a support. That's not what you want to see. No, no, it's not. Then again, that is what you want to see. Don't want to see your Dragonite. I don't know. Ed Entity's like insistence to play three cores in three lanes, kind of like the way he was doing, doing last the OG. They're, 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 yeah. feeding, they're feeding away some kills. They're doing the OG right yeah, now. Yeah, now Crystal's uh, gonna die bottom lane. Yep, yep. Boat coming in. Hits a nice two-man stun, but he can't get away from the chakram. Not when he's that low. You know, more often than not, this is what you see from the Timber versus any of these counters matchup. They're going to get a Bane. I mean, it's something, that's for sure. That is something. It's not nothing. No, but there are very little shits to give, I think, from Misha in, that, uh, in this situation when you're Radiant position five. Is the uh, lack of shits due to... Constipation, or that would be due to uh, on account of being a bane position five, uh, not not yeah. constipation. Although this, this is what you want to see from Shadow Shaman. Hey, oh yeah, Shadow Shaman Wards, not a bug, not a bug. It's no, a no, teacher. No, of course not. They are meant to do this amount of damage to Roshan. Yes. And I, okay, so this is nice because you were talking about entity playing three lanes. The reason they're doing this because they did very well in the lanes, right? So they, they want uh -huh. to take some advantage off of the map, but there are no towers to get. God knows you're not gonna push a tier two at this time. That's a great way to feed. But Roshan, when you have the Serpent Wards, that is a play. Very nice call by them. Uh, that is a Shadow Shaman pervert, <laughs> as I like to call them. Why is he a pervert? Because it's sick. These people, they're, they're, you know that they get off to taking Roshan. They're just like, oh yeah. We can do this, guys. It's like, yeah, dude, we know. Relax. We've all seen the goddamn Reddit clips, all right? But these guys, like, they think they're, you know, they think they're hot shit. Hmm. I thought there were no shits to give. That'll be OG. Uh, That'll be OG. So okay. the other, you know, the other side is So fine. it's no shits for... What do you think Fishman went AFK for? Ah. He's the one who came back in Roche. He's probably reading Reddit. <laughs> Holy shit, Shadow Shaman can take <laughs> take Roche on. 12 minutes. <laughs> he put up a Reddit thread real quickly. Playing against OG right now yeah. needs some advice. And some Redditors are like, did you know that <laughs> Serpent Wards actually do double I damage to the Roche on now? Wow. It's a feature, not a bug. Very funny joke, Redditor. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh no, those are illusions. Okay, he does have the stun to stop this, and he didn't actually break Wukong's command, but they also seem to have caught Fishman. Now the rest of the team is coming in of Entity. They're gonna make sure their Dragonite's gonna be okay, but they need to get Chrysalis out of here, and he's being slowed down by Yuragi so much. Fortunately, there is the Decrepify, but the BKB of BZM, he wants to keep going. Chrysalis does manage to dodge backwards, get away from the torrent, but he can't get the lifesteal up in time. Toby's out of mana. Fortunately, Katomi does manage to get a kill out of this, but the arrow! Oh, yeah, baby. He didn't see that coming in time. The trees hid the ascent of the arrow straight into his behind, and now Toby is gonna be running to the trees, not where you wanna go against the Timber Saw. Panic, panic, panic indeed. Entity seemed to be panicking a little bit against OG, losing a terrible fight. I, I know it's at the tail end of that fight where Dragon Knight, like, he's gonna die anyway, but Radiant's man, Timber is just so good against, like, Radiant's pretty much every offlaner that people are picking these days. Every offlaner, who am I kidding? It's Sand King and Dragon Knight. But, you know, if you want one of these, like, standard offlaners, there's a Timber in the game. He just nullifies the fact that, like, they're supposed to be, un, you know, quote-unquote unkillable. Timber's just like, all right, well, here's pure damage and percentage damage. Yeah. 
Oh, finishes the kill on the Bane, but you, you can see that Enchantress, like, without the levels, man, with, without the farm, like, he's pretty weak. Back inside the game, they're trying to get the fast kill onto BZM. Earlier, he had used his BKB, so it's still on cooldown, a good opportunity for Stormstormer to collect an important kill. And he does have the Aegis, he's certainly gonna need it, as uh, Mar seems to be trying to go for him right now. They do have the side, Misha, okay, that's, uh, that's a freebie. <laughs> Yeah, I think he was fooled by Amar, who was going in deep. And he was like, oh, I got you, brother. I'll go in with you. No, no, Amar was, he was just timber chaining through. Yeah, he's, he's pretty safe to get in, in and out. But, you know, I, I think BZM dying, that's the that's the real issue there for, for OG. Really great call from Entity. No, just the capitalizing on that... Uh, Honestly, pretty short BKB cooldown. I mean, that's a that's a that's an OP item right there. <laughs> like, it's yeah. really good. Yeah. So just just like uh, capitalizing on that, it's it's something you don't really see that often. Like people try, but uh, I feel like that's something the they had to do. Yeah. I, I don't really think we were getting much uh, much effect out of this pug now until that, that kill right there on the Kunkka. Now they've killed the Bane as well, but they still have this Aegis to use. It just doesn't feel like they can actually win team fights despite the uh, Aegis advantage. And no. They're gonna leave Katomi behind. He's gonna be pulled back into the Torrent Arrow. Still not enough, actually with the heal from long range, Storm Stormer helping out his buddy there. Chris was barely getting away into the trees, away from those illusions. Gotta be careful them, Storm Stormer continuing to challenge OG because he has that extra life. He has low mana now though, so they, they could honestly just like leave him at low mana, which seems to be what they're doing. They're kind of ignoring him in the fights, um, which I think makes sense. I mean, e even if Stormstormer did die and come back, I feel like as a Pugna, it's a... Uh, very easy you, to just die again. You're probably just gonna die again, yeah. So it's like, it's really a safety Aegis where like he can run around and do crazy shit and uh, he's not gonna get ganked. But if we're talking like a full five on five team fight and he goes down, like, yeah, it's it, he's probably not uh, coming back from that. Well, it does look like Stormstormer, the aforementioned Hugna specialist is gonna be going for a shard, so. Yeah. I'll be expecting apologies from you and Suns fan shortly. Listen, I think you probably still do it, but it's just not as sick <laughs> as people think. If it constantly, like, re-triggered yeah, on the illusions, yeah. it would be really good. No, that, but that would be extremely good, yeah. It's just the fact that it just happens once in the in the whole AOA. Now, the AOA is very big, though. It is this, this set, uh, deceptively large. That's what she said. No, it's not. Sorry about that. Uh, 9 to 13, staff. a slight lead for OG right now. And uh, Entity seemed to be kind of, well, I thought they were going to be resetting. It seemed like they were like, okay, let's just farm up our next round of items. But they're going to go for a three-man smoke here. Not really showing any heroes on the map. You could see Amar, he's got some some bells ringing his head, warning him to back up because, again, nobody's showing. They've got some very deep wards on OG. Look at that. They've got a, a mid-deep ward that's right next to the Tier 1 tower. They've got a triangle ward as well. Entity isn't showing on they either don't see one shit. of those yeah, they don't see anything. They like see a huge oh, smoke yeah. flag. I mean, yeah, yeah, that's a very, very long, thick <laughs> yeah, look at that flag. <laughs> they are yeah, here. Yeah, there's a... Yeah. <laughs> he knows. He knows. He's like, I'm, yeah. I'm not going to late until one of you shows. They've even got a very deep ward now in the top lane as well. So yeah. after their mid ward died. Mm -hmm. So you continue to have two very, very deep wards that give him a good idea and Entity just refusing Radiant's to give up. Power. They're gonna hold this position in the lane and they're gonna try and test to see if anybody gets sloppy on the side of OG. If not, they'll just take this tower. Dire structures are fortified. That's a, definitely one thing that Entity has going for them in, in this trap uh, is the amount of ways of taking towers that they have. Every one of their heroes, other than Monkey King, it has uh, some like strong tower push ability. And, and they don't even need to commit to it. Like Pugna can poke and Shadow Shaman can throw Serpent Wards from far away and DK is insanely strong. Enchantress can use the creep. EZM is cutting a creep wave, I see. they. Do you see him? Yeah, you can see the, the arrow actually just Radiant's kind of fishing. Yeah. No crystals is somewhere around. Yuragi no. is going to be going for a Scotty next, has the Diffusal plus uh, Manta. So offensively, he's a dangerous threat, but can still get bursted pretty easily. Yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of like unmantable disable from uh, Entity, like all of the Shadow Shaman spells. 
the uh, Monkey King Boundless. I mean, you can time it. DK stun as well. This stuff is really difficult to Manta. The, the Manta, like you said, really is just for doing tons of damage and, and, and also not showing on lanes when you want to push, like just sending the Manta Illusions down lanes. Yeah. That really helps too. Well, no, well, OG once again have like three cores that it can play, are very tanky and are hard to gank and can play independently. BZM. Try and pull him back, but they actually hexed up Kunkka. Couldn't quite do it. Yoragi's gonna close in for the kill, but a fiend's grip on the side might net them an extra one. As the boat does manage to land, Toby in trouble. Decrepified, healed a little bit, but Storm Stormer can't commit. Not in the face of this Phantom Lancer illusions. Yoragi quickly deals with the ward. Now turns back to the Enchantress. Pull back again. The Dragonite arrow coming in. Toby dodges it, but they're just barely keeping him alive, and there is no response from Entity. They are crumbling in this fight, and just hero after hero is falling. The problem, like, Stormstormer, those were amazing saves in that fight. That was yeah. great. It looked great, but who the hell does the damage yeah. if he's not the one doing the damage, if he's saving? Yeah. Like, you can only use the spells aggressively or defensively, so... I, I really, yeah, I, I think they need his damage. By the way, I love I love Amar's build. He actually went only three points in, in reactive. Like, he went reactive up until the point that the lane was won, and then he's just maxing the nukes. Yeah, that is cool. I think that's that's pretty cool. Does he have attributes or anything? No, no attributes. But he, he did go for the talents over reactive. Yeah, that's pretty cool. is under attack. You know, I, I I like that. I actually really like that because if you take the tier ones, you're probably doing that with reactive level three. Like you don't need reactive level four to tank those really. No. And uh, where you'd want reactive level four is like if you're pushing tier twos or high ground, but. In Dota these days, man, that takes a long time before you push tier twos, yeah. especially high ground too, like two Roshans sometimes. I mean, this time it's going to be two Roshans for sure because this is the second one. So, yeah, nice build. Cool build. So Stormstormer did buy out the shard. I was curious to see if he, he actually did that, and he did. So it means they can give the shard to somebody else. Arrow coming in. It's actually going to hit Roshan. The torrent's coming in as well. OG, can they get there in time? You're on the oh, Toby intercept. Nice done. Two man from the Monkey King as well. And they get a lot of good bird damage. Misha's going to get burned out as the Enchanter finishes him off with the Infinite. Now Monkey King jumping in for more. Really wants the kill on Yuragi and does get it. So one swipe is good enough. And he still has the Aegis, so he's going to look for even more. Managed to get the kill up on Taiga. Now the Shackles holding down the Kunkka. A second Roshan turns into a massive team fight for Entity. Cleaning up on all sides. I was getting pretty concerned that they were not going to be able to get past this whole tier one and doing Roshans. Like, when are you guys actually going to press the advantage? But what a sick fight from them. Yeah, that that double stun with the Pugna suck. I mean, yeah, true. That makes the shard look really good. Like the shard actually looked really good in that fight. He did a solid amount of damage to both the Bane and the PL there. Yeah, that double stun, just beautiful. All the DK damage as well. Even even his splash damage because he's the red dragon like all of this added up was just enough to push push your augie back and that's, he ends up going down that's a really good point because i was a bit concerned like okay what is this like phantom lancer look going late game but if dk can keep you know scaling upwards right he always does pretty well it's against pretty Phantom. good yeah it's pretty good i mean peel likes taking long fights and i mean dk is one of the best heroes in the game for taking long fights. He has a passive that gives him armor and a regen, and he's got this damage or splash damage over time, a damage over time ability from his Aghanim shard, damage reduction from his from his Q. He's got a low cooldown stun. Like, yeah, DK seems pretty good. I, I would wager that, like, if you look at Dota buff, he's, he's probably in the top 50% of win rates for, for his PL, I, I would say. Mm. Especially given how that laning phase went. Yeah, yeah. You know, if he can scale up the face of Phantom Lancer later on to the game and he does well in the laning phase, it's a strong combination. But uh, it is still OG, despite that massive swing of a big team fight plus claiming Roshan, it was a clean team fight too. I'm not sure if Entity lost any heroes in it. Uh, they are actually still up in net worth on the OG side. Is there any big timings that we're going to be looking forward to. Looks like Phantom Lancer not going for the Scotty and going back for the heart. So that'll obviously be a really big one. He already has the Reaver. Yeah, uh, so I'm, su I'm surprised he's not going for the Scotty. I feel like it's really good against uh, DK, Pugna, mm. um, Monkey King, all, all life, I mean, Enchantress as well. But th that just shows you how much he's oh, going. 
How do you do that? I don't know how they. Oh, they had the harpy. Uh, oh my well, god, hey, that's bro. how I was sitting there thinking like that ward. Yes, that I was ward looking at the fought, same ward. I was like, that's there's their there's ward. No way. <laughs> like, where the hell is that vision coming from, bro? Is that a glitch? It's no, it's the harpy. harpy. It's the harpy. Yeah, but. He Heart is because he's afraid. He's just melting. Like, he's melting in these fights. He needs to survive at 10% HP and doppelganger out and heal up and then go back in, like, play the long fights. Oh, like they just that. caught Amar. This is a really big kill. They've got the disables to keep him inside the Wukong's command. No save whatsoever. In fact, the Bane's going to be caught on top of this. So, nice two man kill as Entity take that top tower very quickly, Radiant's sweep through bottom, bottom lane, under catches under Amar out of position. And uh, now they're going to start exerting a little bit of a stranglehold on the map. Yeah, I mean, uh, OG's kind of crumbling under the pressure of Entity here. Like, and I know the network lead is still like slightly in favor of OG, but I mean, in the last few fights, it just hasn't seemed like they can do anything. They they don't seem to have the damage to deal with the Entity heroes. Like, they just have too much healing and too much life stealing for the same reasons we talked about Scotty being yeah. decent. It's just, they just, don't, and, and now Entity does have the damage on a few of their heroes. Even the DK we saw do a significant amount of damage there. So, yep, split pushing is going to be the name of the game for OG, it looks like. They need they need their PL to start doing damage. Um, so, looking for just levels at this point. Uh, he has the heart, he's going for the Scotty next. What about a hump? I don't know. I feel like this. Uh, if they get an Agadrim Scepter on this Monkey King, anywhere he lands, there's just going to be constant like AOE damage with the Maelstrom and stuff. Yes. Yeah. They've yeah. got the Fireball on the ground, so they can use the Life Drain once with the Ward combination to clear out a, a thing of illusion. So even if that's forcing them to use the Doppelganger and then follow up with something else after that, oh, it really does look like Entity are in a very promising position. But we'll see whether or not OG as a game plan after the Sages, right? Because that's yeah. part of it, right? They've been forced to remain passive. Yeah, the yeah. Life. It, just add, it just adds too much advantage that you can just wait and maintain the same level of farm. Like, why not just do that and then fight when you when you know the advantage is, is even, at yeah. least. Um, one thing I did notice, by the way, in that Roshan fight that was the huge game changer for mm -hmm. Entity is, is Stormstormer spam pinging his, uh, his Nether Ward. So he's clearly communicating to actually fight in the AoE of the suck around around the nether ward and that's right. why we see these uh, double stuns and, and stunning the heroes near it like a, a, as a team they it would and it doesn't surprise me because he's such a prolific pugna player but they know how to play around the the new pugna shard they're they're respecting it a lot which uh, when, when you're mid pugna uh, that makes a lot of sense because he's doing actual damage Radiance top tower is, is that x okay Dyer's it's somehow, yeah, it's hard attack. to hard to tell there there he goes We'll get the tier two. And we'll see uh, how they try and catch OG because they do have their BKBs, right? They lost the Aegis, but they got uh, BKB on Monkey King. They've got BKB on uh, the Pugna now. So they feel very strong about team fights. Yep. Particularly in team fights, as you were saying, around the ward, that's their their whole lineup, right? They've got Serpent Wards, they've got the Pugna Ward, they've got Wukong's Command, yeah, put it all they've in got one Fireball. Spot. Yeah, yeah it's like, we it's, just want to fight in one area. You're totally right. You're totally right. OG wants to play fights in very large areas. Uh, well, then again, I mean, they do a boat, but they peel, like, they timber, peel. Like, these heroes want to draw out fights. They can, you know, run up high grounds. They can do the kind of... Uh, Scooby Doo style chase, like that's what they're looking for on this on the side of OG. Because uh, you definitely don't want to fight. Yeah, dude. That's a good way to describe that. You. You're talking about the hallways in the oh yeah, yeah, doors yeah the door, some door openings. Freaking Shaggy there. Somehow he's over here. You know, next minute. Yeah, that's that's what they're looking for. OG. Two <laughs> K lead now as uh, Entity just passively pulling up a bit more but not necessarily fully shutting OG out. No. Uh, so we are going to see the Aghanim Scepter next for the Dragonite. We continue to talk about that scaling. What's our Kunkka doing, though? He's also going to be trying to turn into a right clicker. He's going to be going for the Silver Edge. Yep, and uh, Amar, Aghanim Scepter, is on the menu for him tonight. Oh. So he's looking to do some damage. And... <laughs> he's like, okay, you're going to lower my spell damage by 25%. I'll with double. Pugna. I'll double. I will double my <laughs> yeah, damage. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, these days more, it, it, it is more frequent that you see the Aghanim Scepter get picked up. The uh, Chakram's been buffed, I, I think, a couple of times in, in, in terms of damage, the pass-through damage. It's very good. 
uh, in general, but in this game, it, it does feel like they, it does really feel like they lack damage to kill the entity heroes currently. Yeah. But they're ready. They're ready to go. Arrow cut oh, across. Oh, they got catch. him. That is a Shadow Shaman kill. Potentially, Yuragi actually scared to commit there. Backed out. The Moonlight Shadow trying to protect of these heroes. Misha is going to be jumped on, though. His Chrysalis and the Sherpa Wards are all down. They want to be able to keep this uh, Phantom Lancer in place. But he does manage to doppelganger away. Toby's still sticking to him, though. Amar. They gotta focus one of these targets. Looks like maybe Amar's gonna be the target as they go through the Timber King. Now the Wukong's command, he's surrounded. They keep him inside, it'll be a kill, but they can't quite get him. Trying to chase even farther. Doesn't get very far with that Timber Chain, but an entity back to the Wukong's command. Gotta remember their idea of staying in one place. They cannot get separated too much, chasing after Amar, and now they have to give up and fight entirely. The Yule Scepter picked up by Amar, does net them a kill onto Katomi. Awkward synergy between the Monkey King and the Pugna. It's one of those games where, and this, this is why I think Pugna Core is a lot harder to play than Pugna Support uh -huh. as a lower win rate. Is like, he wanted to Decrepify there to do damage because it's like they they almost need his Decrepify damage to kill Amar, but then also you probably want your carry Monkey King hitting at the same time too. So yeah. I, I guess the play is just probably Probably wait until like there's at least a DK stun or something and three heroes surrounding Amar because th that was a little scattered. Like the DK stun came out later after Stormstormer was in the back and he wasn't he wasn't there. Mm -hmm. So like I, I think if you want to kill Amar, you need to do it in uh, a way more like uh, structured way where it's like okay we have these three heroes let's go or he's isolated and the other heroes are dead or something like that because he's he's just looking real tanky. No, yeah, he certainly is. Hard to gauge with Timbersaw. I mean, that's that's like one of the more annoying things of dealing with the heroes. Like, you know you're not supposed to focus him, but if he's too far to position, you have to punish that. You have to be like, let's go on this guy, but sometimes he knows he's not at a position. OG. Luring them around the Roshan area and they're actually gonna go out and try and force the fight. Now the DK is not the best target. Katomi oh, though drops here. dangerously low. Arrow slips on by. Katomi fortunately does manage to get enough heal. He's gonna be okay, but you gotta be aware of that Tidebringer hit. Misha actually steps maybe a little bit too far forward here. Cop of the Shadow Shaman. And uh, I like that play. Fishman drops the ward and then plays the distance. Doesn't want to get caught yeah, by nice. any OG heroes. That was, that was super nice. Okay, Amar does have the BKB. Does a healthy amount of damage. But the rest of the team doesn't feel super comfortable on going for this one. And it looks like they're going to start backing up retreating. They just throw the illusions out. Do what mana burn they can. That's usually how the Pugna ward goes. Yeah. Is, that, is that. Yeah. See, the explanation was they weren't around the wards when he first they started shunted it yes. and they got in the area. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't. It does nothing. Yeah. So we're, we're looking for another double stun before he sucks the ward. That, that's like what you're looking for. Can they get this Monkey King into the pit? They've got the Wukong command, but they cut down the three. Amar catches him. They're committing for the Roshan right now. BKB's going out. The boat goes down. Roshan's still not dead. It's going to be up to this Dragon Knight, but he's actually being feed script. They're going to kill him, and the Ages is immediately picked up, and Chrysalis still is not into the fight. Truly is Stormstormer and Chrysalis. Oh, no. Now that's going to be Wukong's command, but Stormstormer, he's nowhere near it. He's trying to get himself away from these heroes that just chase him down. OG, thanks to Amar, that could have been a disaster if he got up the Wukong's command while they were finishing up Roshan, but instead OG collect all the goods. Yeah, he didn't, I mean, Monkey King's fine. He didn't die, nothing, you know, he's, he's chilling, but he was, he's the guy. He's the guy that's supposed to be setting up for that Roshan, right? Like yeah, he's yeah. the reason that it's so difficult to fight in the pit is that he drops the Wukong's command. So, yeah, cutting that tree, crucial there. Just like a small play. Great patience from OG, too. Like, they're doing... This, they're doing the Scooby-Doo thing. They're doing the Scooby-Doo thing. Like, they're not, they're not like, hard committing to, to areas anymore. Um, that Roshan looked like maybe it was going to be that, where they are punished for being in the pit, but because of the tree cut, that... It, di it didn't happen. It didn't pan out that way. Yep. And with that, we have a 9k gold lead for OG. Yeah, it's funny how uh, Entity were winning fights, but the network never really spiraled out of control. OG wins one team fight and just completely goes out. I'm not sure if that's just because of the, the farming speed of Phantom Lines. Uh, or... To be fair, it's it's the Roche. Like, yeah. they, they got, uh, let's see, I mean, Cheese gives, what, a thousand net worth at this point. 
and then the Roche kill, as well as giving a lot of net worth and the kills in front of Roche. So it's really just like one fight. The fact that it's Radiance that that was a fight that they won in the in the later stages of the game, I, I think. Agonim Scepter now complete for the Monkey King. We're about a thousand gold away from Ags on the Dragon Knight. So there will be some big timings coming in the way of Entity, just not in the next couple of minutes. Yeah, the uh, the move slow from the the Black Dragon will be really important, actually, for just all the PL illusions and the cleave, the massive amount of cleave. They're actually forcing things right now. I don't think Entity expected this much OG aggression. That's going to be a tier three down before anybody's really here to respond. They do catch the real Phantom Lancer with Zekrepify. Storm Stormer's having a hard time dealing with these illusions, constantly harassing him. The Chrysalis does barely dodge. Once again, another tree drop might have led to his death. Range Barracks goes down. Let's see if OG wants to keep this up. Remember we asked Pender, by the way, in an interview. Just sitting there sucking the ward. Yeah, yeah. Crept by the wards. The problem with this, like, you have to put the wards just in the middle of them. So... You're threatening the ward just dying. So this is, I mean, this is a, this is weird. <laughs> this is a weird, really, weird I mean, weird the it keeps working, but they, they just, it's done a little outside of the range of enemy. They don't want to go too far, particularly not for a hero that is an Aegis, so. The Monkey King illusions are really helping out here too for the high ground defense. The fact yeah. that he's been able to stay there for long enough that he just has the three or four constant illusions up, Radiance it's hard, really hard to push into that. And, and then the ward as well, the decrepifies. It looks so goofy, but it, it legit, like, it holds the high ground for them. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like a worse version to, or a late game version of pushing into a Venomancer. You either do it now, or it, you, know, if you give him enough time up. to set up wards, it's like, okay, it's not worth it. Yeah. For sure. Hey, Sleep, OG. Are they going to all in for this one? No. He's got a four staff to get him away. So it'll just be a tier two. Radiance bottom tower. Still have another minute with these ages, so if they want to keep this going, would make a lot of sense. Feels like it's very hard for Entity to really stop this Phantom Lancer or punish him heavily. Now it's going for the ward, quickly kills it. Pretty low, thanks to this Monkey King with Nullfire going out. BKB activated by Chrysalis. Yuragi's first life is still up. He's trying to go for Toby right now. Toby is going to turn around. They're charging up the targets. I'm not sure if this is going so well for Entity at all as uh, Amar just goes in with his BKB. They have still yet to clear out this Aegis. They finally might be able to once again to grabify a little bit of anti-synergy. The Monkey King doesn't do anything. Yuragi, yes, they finally kill the first life, but your buybacks are going to be wasted here. It's now a dead Monkey King. For two minutes, Toby's not going to make it back to the fountain either. He can buy back, but what's the point? You don't have your dragon form. Storm Stormer's going to get cleaned up, and just like that, the game is done. Oh, gee. Yeah, GG. All in now. Dude, you're in that fight. Such an annoying PL player, actually. Like, yeah. If, yeah. If, you're, if you're playing against that, you're... It, it,